Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this third Sunday of Pentecost uh, as we worship today. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give us such wisdom of your purpose and such assurance of your love and power that we may never hold fast the hope which is in Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the Word.
appoint for us, then, a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing that displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as have they, just as they have done to me, from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one tenth of your flocks, and you shall be his, his slaves. And in that day he will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, we are determined to have a king over us, so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before their kingship. Before the Lord in Gilgal, there they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is, in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For the word of the Lord.
had gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has the elder, and by the roar of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called to them, and he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his pocket without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they have said, He has an unclean then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother, your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise Amen. One of the great failures of Christianity and, and Christian leaders, be they uh, lay people or secular people or those who are bishops or priests, all too often it's very easy to say to each other, what I think is right is what God thinks. It's all too easy to try and put God in a box of our making or, or our shaping and say, this is what God thinks, without doing any of the listening, without doing any of the reflecting, and then leading us away from God. We've seen this in the life of the Anglican Church over the last 40 or 50 years in particular, around the ordination of women. We had two diametrically opposed camps arguing with each other trying to say, no, I'm right, the other one saying, I'm right and you're wrong, and ultimately struggling to find a way to let God in because both sides wanted something that was diametrically opposed. We see it today with whether or not um, people who are in the LGBTIQA plus community should be welcomed in the life of church. Some say, no, no, they're sinners and that they need to be cast out and condemned. And others say, no, that the love of God includes and welcomes. And usually those things come from whatever perspective or biases that one holds already. And our task is not to decide. Our task is to listen. 
It is to discover what God wants for us through prayer, through worship, reflection and conversation with others, rather than to seek to impose upon those around us what our own personal ideas of what God wants are. And we see this in both the Old Testament and the Gospel readings this morning, that there were preset ideas about how we are to be as God's people. Perhaps most profoundly, in the book of, first book of Samuel, where there is this desire for a king, there is actually a rejection, as Samuel is talking about, of all that God had been for those people up to that time, right from the leading out of Egypt, through the desert, and being in place in becoming a part and becoming Israel in the land that God has set aside for them. Not only is God God, but there is the, a bargain, so to speak. There's not, there are other ways of saying it, but that's the simplest way that God will be the God of that people if they will be his people. So it's a two-way or mutual relationship between God and the people of Israel. But for God to be God in the way that has been envisaged, that is set out in the books of Numbers, Leviticus, and in Deuteronomy in particular, God is king. Not necessarily an absent king, but one that is not seen so easily. And over time, as the Israelites consolidate into more and more like an, what we might call a nation state, not that any such concept existed 3,000 years ago in the way that we understand it, the desire to be more like other nations, so their own attitudes, not necessarily God's, their own desires, their own wants, overwhelm that desire to be God's people in the way that God had invited them to be. And in choosing or seeking a king, whether it's Saul or David, there is a rejection of what God desired for God's chosen people. They are turning away from God as king so that they may put themselves as God's people in a box that is like every other nation around them, or city-state is more, is more accurate. This is confirmed, in one sense, this rejection of God in John's telling of Jesus' trial. And where Pilate speaks to the crowds, and particularly the priests who were there, shall I crucify your king? Their answer is, we have no king but Caesar. And that completes that turning away from what God wanted them to be, and fails pretty much everything they learned during the exile after the fall of Jerusalem and Babylon's conquest of Judea. Likewise, in the Gospel, Jesus is bringing something new of God. And he's not saying that it has to be believed by everybody at this point. This is the very beginning of his ministry. But he is showing through his actions, like casting out of demons, the healing of people, his teaching, gathering of disciples, that something's going on here. Something important that needs to be thought about, prayed about, reflected upon. And he's inviting those who come to him to discover whether or not God is doing something here. It's far too early in Jesus' ministry for that to be quite so overt. And for us, it's part of our opportunity of hindsight to look back through the Gospel to see what Jesus was doing in light of us living in the resurrection that we understand it. Those who are there condemning him, and they are condemning him, whether it be the Pharisees, the scribes, 
those were saying he's doing things by the, the agency of the, the devil. Those were saying he shouldn't even be out, such as his family members, including his mum, are not stopping. They are not praying about what's going on. And they have this box they want to keep Jesus in that is defined by their understanding of his place within family, culture and society that means he cannot do the work of God, or that's what they would like to see, in the way that he understands that he is proclaiming. There is no, not prayer going on. There is not reflection taking place. There is not time or taking stock to work out, is God at work in the midst of this? We see it today. We see it all too often in politics. That people will claim something of God to justify the actions that they take. Some of you may have heard of the, the Christian nationalist movement that is quite strong in parts of the United States at the moment. That is an argument to justify a way of being, a political being in the world through God that makes no reflection on the scriptures, on whether or not God is involved or not. And there are countless times throughout history where the same has been the case. What we are called as God's people to do is not to apply what we think things should be like, whether it be politics, whether it should be social structure, depending on our own biases and prejudices, and name them as what God wants, but rather we are called to stop to listen, to pray, to reflect and discover what God might want for us in this place and at this time. In my own experience, about 13 years ago, Bishop John, our previous bishop, invited me to um, at least consider whether or not I would come from my parish in Melbourne, where I was at the time, to be at least have a conversation with him about being the, the rector of Benalla. And I said no. And I said no the next time. And the third time. And by the time he got to the fourth time of asking me, I said, well, I need to shut him up. So I'll go and have a talk to them, thinking that'll be the end of it. Part of that meant was that I had to consider seriously, was God calling me to that place? And after arguing with God in the chapel at the morning prayer one day, trying to work out what's right and wrong, I went to an hour. Because that's what, ultimately, I understood God wanted me to be. Not what I wanted, but what God wanted. For each of us, there are plenty of moments like that where we need to discover or discern what God is calling us to be as people, as Christians, as people of faith in our lives, whether it be in our workplace, in our family, or in our broader community. Because unless we're having that conversation with God, that seeking to discern and understand, it's all too easy to miss the point. And to apply what we think is right onto God, regardless of what God might want for us and for our people. So let's actually not be like the Israelites and reject God. Let's not be like those who are gathered around Jesus and were not listening to what he was saying and wanting to put him back in his place and keep things exactly as everyone was comfortable. Let us be like the disciples and listen and engage with God in prayer and seek what God wants for you and for I in our lives. The Lord be with you.
If you would please stand. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. So he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Rejoice in the family of the church. May all who come find love and fellowship. May they find acceptance and friendship. Lord, help your church be an instrument of peace and healing in the world. As we come together, let us show the unity that is ours in Christ Jesus. Let us show one faith, one church, one God. We pray especially for unity among Christians, that they may show unity to the world. In our wider church this day, we pray for the work of the Victorian Council of Churches and the emergency ministry volunteers of the Victorian Council of Churches. We pray for the Diocese of Canberra and Goulburn, for their Bishop, Mark Shaw, and the people and clergy of that diocese. In our own diocese, we pray for our Bishop Clarence and his family. We also pray for the parish of Central Goulburn, for Richard Pennington and the parish family there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray thee, O God, for the wonderful variety of people and talents in the world. We ask your blessing on all areas of growth and goodness and grace. We pray for all schools in our community, which visit to learn, their teachers and other staff are not with their families work 
give thanks for all that enriches and encourages family life. We pray for the social services and all who support any families who are in difficulty. We continue to pray for the work of Loaves and Fishers Christians Caring, along with all of support organisations in Wangaratta and District. We, pray, we place before you families where there is great debt or where love is absent. Lord, bless our homes with your love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you, that is shared with one another a sign of God's peace.
your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Like incense, my prayer rises to meet you. My arms stretch out, lifting me high. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You discern my thoughts from far away. Like incense, my prayer rises to meet you. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Like incense, my prayer rises to meet you. My arms stretch out. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Loving God, we thank you for this world of wonder and delight. You have given it to us to care for, so that all your creatures may enjoy its bounty. Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that, that when we turned away from you, you sent Jesus to live and work as one of us and bring us back to you. He showed us how to love you and set us free to love and serve one another. Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that on the cross, Jesus took away our sin all that keeps us from each other and from you. He frees us from hate and fear, from all that destroys love and trust. Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise. And so with everyone who believes in you, with all the saints and angels, we rejoice and praise you in you. supper he took the cup and again and gave you thanks. He shared the cup with them and said, This is my blood poured out, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith.
are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
Let us pray. Living God, in this holy meal, you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your saving work among us. Give us courage for our pilgrimage and bring us to the joys you promise. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. There are a couple of notices, um, one in particular I'd like to bring to your attention, um, and that's Bishop Clarence's letter following on from the announcement of the appointment of the new dean last Sunday. Please uh, carefully read that so that everyone is understanding, um, and then be mindful of what other stand for our closing hymn. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of God.